I'm Brent Ellis, president at Spring Arbor University, and welcome to our homecoming 2020 edition. Slightly different, uh, rather than being in person, we're coming to you virtually, and you're coming to us virtually. Uh, we wish you could be on campus to see some of the, the wonderful things that are taking place. Uh, we have a couple of construction projects. It seems like we're always moving dirt these days, which is a, is a wonderful thing. Uh, but what you could really see though, is the, even in the midst of this COVID era, the vibrancy that is, that is uh, current on campus as our students are wearing masks, our faculty and staff are still wearing masks. Being back in person, it really is a, is a wonderful thing. And you know that it was part of what made your experience at Spring Arbor so transformational and it's what's still taking place on our campus today. We've, we've done more than a thousand COVID tests at, at this point in time. Um, our positivity rate is right about 1.18, uh, how's that for precision? Um, we have no active COVID cases on campus at this point in time, but we still thought it would be best to have homecoming in this virtual format because we want to make sure that our students can finish the semester in person. And so please continue to pray for us, pray for God's provision, pray for health, the health of our students, of our faculty and our staff. Uh, pray that this semester would conclude well and that we can you know find a place maybe even another step towards normalcy beginning in january moving into second semester uh, we have some challenges before us uh, but our god is gracious and, and our god owns the sheep and the cattle on a thousand hills and we trust his, in his provision and we're thankful for what we're able to provide uh, but we know that there's a, there's there's hope for tomorrow as well and so thank you for participating in this uh, thank you for your investment uh, and your pride and your ownership of your university, Spring Arbor University, and enjoy um, this virtual homecoming. Hello, Spring Arbor alumni. Welcome to our virtual homecoming. My name is Micah Dauma, and I'm the Vice President of Student Government Association here, speaking on behalf of the students and our president, Celia Clifford. I just want to talk about the alumni program here. We're so grateful for the alumni and all the ways that they give to our community, whether that be financially, through prayer, mentorship, or even some career opportunities. We're just so appreciative of the way that you guys help us out here. Um, we're really excited for the continued support that you all will give us um, going forward. And uh, yeah, welcome to Homecoming 2020. Welcome to Homecoming 2020. I am Mary Albert Darling, class of 78, and we're so happy you chose to join us virtually this year. We're sorry we can't be together in person, but we're happy for those who usually can't make it to Spring Arbor that they can be part of homecoming this year. It is our hope that you will connect with others in fun, meaningful ways through our time together, ways that might even lead to new or renewed friendships. And it is our prayer that the community that is SAU will continue to thrive as we spread community throughout the world. And for this time, we're so glad to be together. Greetings Cougar Nation, I'm Ryan Cottingham, the Athletic Director, and I want to welcome all of our alumni to Homecoming 2020. I want to especially uh, give a shout out to all of our former athletes. Uh, thank you for all that you've done and you continue to do for Cougar Athletics. also want to throw out a quick reminder about the, the 5K run. Make sure you get your times in on, on Facebook. Uh, so looking forward to seeing all of you again soon. Thanks so much for who you are and for representing Spring Arbor University. Go Cougars! Cross-Cultural Studies welcomes you to the Spring Arbor University 2020 Virtual Homecoming. Hello, I'm Diane Kurtz, Director of Cross-Cultural Studies. We wish you good health and the blessing of the presence of God in your lives, for it's His light that shines through us. God bless you. Hi, I'm Robbie Bolton, University Librarian at Spring Arbor University. And on behalf of the White Library, I am pleased to welcome you to the Virtual Homecoming 2020. Hi, I'm Brian Knapp, Director of Alumni Relations here at SAU. And I'm Hannah Gilliam, Alumni and Student Relations Coordinator. And we want to wish you a happy homecoming and hope that you take the time to tune in and watch what we have scheduled for you today with our virtual homecoming. And we look forward to seeing you again, hopefully sometime soon back on campus. Hello alumni and friends of Spring Arbor. Welcome again to homecoming. It's so good to have you with us. Sorry we can't be together face to face. Um, we put together a little treat for you. For campus, we typically do uh, an alumni chapel band on the Friday um, for any alumni who gather together. And we uh, had have a, an alum from a few years back who 
gathered some friends and they put together a special worship set for you. So a special thank you to Archie Woods and the gang. After that, we have um, 1992 alum, uh, uh, Kelly Crum, who is the Director of Multicultural Relations at uh, Jackson College. So sit back and enjoy chapel. Side 
I've carried a burden too long on my own. I wasn't created to bear it alone. I hear your invitation to let it all go. I see it now, I'm laying it down, all I know is I need you, I run to the Father, I fall into grace, I'm done with the hiding, the reason to wait, my heart needs a surgeon, my soul needs a friend, so I run to the Father again. Thank you to the Board of Trustees, President Brent Ellis, the Director of Alumni Relations, Brian Knapp, and of course, Chaplain Brian Kono for this great opportunity. As an alum of this Christian university, I am forever grateful for the wonderful instructors, the leadership, and the campus community for embracing me on my journey as a transfer student. Some people may not understand that the institution of higher learning is rooted in faith. This institution is rooted in faith. 
that it's okay to worship and pray and not be ashamed of our God. See, Spring Arbor University offers opportunities that you may not find at a traditional college or setting. So let me tell you, when I arrived on this campus, it felt like home. I am sure that some of you as current students chose SAU for some of the same reasons that I did. Small classroom size, friendly environment, faculty eager to teach, and staff very accommodating, and of course, a personal spiritual growth. I was a young single mother when I attended back in 1990, and I had many goals and ambitions. And college was by no means easy. At that time, I didn't realize but I had grit, that passion and persistence. And there were very few people that looked like me, but I knew why I was here. I can truly recall how this university helped laid and shaped the foundation for me. You are kicking off this year with 1 John chapter 1, verse 7. When we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship with one another. To walk in the light means to live in accordance with his perfect life and character. John was the apostle of love and love is our commitment to one of our great commandments. The light is the truth. And it also shows me what I still need to do to clean up areas in my life. But I know that when I walk in light, that life becomes free and good. See, for me, I want my light to shine in every area. So today I thought about speaking from four points that help guide me to where I'm at today. And I wanna share them with you. My first point is walking with purpose. Walking with purpose. It's not enough to have lived. We should be determined to live for something and that's Winston Churchill. Everything in our lives is planned by God. We must walk in our true identity that God has for our life, knowing that we are chosen and we are precious. In my journey after college, I had a roadmap for myself. I wasn't sure how I was gonna get there, but the destination was soon to follow. I knew that my purpose was to serve young people and my community. And I think that was just part of my DNA. And I guess that's probably why I majored in sociology. I can tell you that my steps weren't always straight and I had some detours along the way because you know, life can throw you many curveballs. But see, my purpose had never changed. And the foundation that was placed in me never changed. I have been blessed to be employed since graduating from Spring Iron University, and I've served on various boards and communities where folks seen something special in me. See, God prepares us for everything, and I wanted to make sure that as I walk with purpose in everything that I do, that my light shines in Christ. See, people can see when you're real or not, if you are loving or not, and if you're kind or not. Maya Angelou said people will forget what you said. People will forget what you did, but people will never forget how you made them feel. When you are walking with purpose and fellowshipping with one another, you must be purposeful. Make your conversations and service to others meaningful. My second point is my relationship with God. See, we are living in a time in our nation where hatred and racial division is rampant. And I've learned that my voice matters and matters even more being a woman of color. See, I can help create change within my circles and surroundings through prayer. And at this time, it must be a strong time of prayer and a strong time of integrity. 
See, we cannot allow the flesh and the world and the busyness of life, the cares of life, to get in the way of our relationship with God. See, there was a time where I was too involved, too busy, and I had to say, whoa, hold on. See, God will tell you when it's time to be still. And when you're not giving him the proper priority, you will sense it with areas in your life. I've learned that God has ordained seasons and cycles. And sometimes when our dreams aren't coming to pass on our timetable, we can be tempted to get frustrated. But we have to be careful not to allow our busyness of life to keep us moving forward spiritually. Understand that in God's kingdom, every season is not harvest. There is a plowing season, a planting season, and a watering season. And sure, we would want and love for every season to be a time of increase. But without the other seasons, we wouldn't be prepared. See, it's during that plowing season that God brings issues to light that we must deal with. He's getting us prepared for our blessing and our promotion. See, doors were beginning to open for me, and the key was not to lose ground not to go backwards, but to hold my position by keeping my faith and expectancy, even when it's difficult. So I had to keep plowing and speaking the word daily. See, because God promises us that our season is coming. My third point is perfecting your craft. And that is doing what you love and what you are good at. It's said that it takes 10,000 hours to master your craft. And professionally, spiritually, whatever it is, perfect your craft. If you're a Sunday school teacher, spend time in it. If you're a professor, be innovative and creative and learn new ways. If you are a student athlete, participate and practice and commit to your craft. See, perfecting your craft may be also going back, taking some classes, gardening, mentoring young people, and that's what I like to do. So I spend time in that. But sometimes perfecting your craft means coming out your comfort zone, taking your craft and truly reaching out to others, others that may not look like you, have the same social economic status as you, physical abilities, and so on. See, Spring Arbor University has made a wonderful impact in the Spring Arbor community and, of course, abroad. But I challenge you today to also go outside, maybe to the greater Jackson community, to fellowship with one another. My fourth point is root people, R-O-O-T. So I had this tree analogy When I think of people in my life, whether it be friends and family or acquaintances, whomever, and I place them all inside my tree tests. And it goes like this. There are leaf people, and these are people, some people, who come into your life and they are like leaves on a tree. They are only there for a season. You can't depend on them or count on them because they are weak. And they are only there to give you shade. Like leaves, they are there to take what they need. And as soon as it gets cold or the wind blows in your life, they're gone. But you can't be angry or mad at them. It's just who they are. They're leaf people. And then you have the branch people. And these are people who come into your life and they're like branches on a tree. They are stronger than the leaves, and they will stick around through most of the seasons. But if you go through a storm or two in your life, you could lose them. They could lose ground. Most times they break away when it's really tough. And although they are stronger than the leaves, you have to test them out before you run out there and put all your weight on them. Because, see, in most cases, they can't handle too much weight. But again, you can't be mad at them because it's just who they are. They are branch people. 
But let me tell you, if you find some root people in your life, like the roots on a tree, you found something special. Because these people that are root people, their hearts are fine because they are not trying to be seen. Their only job is to hold you up, listen to you, motivate you, inspire you, encourage you. And they want you to live a strong and healthy life. See, they want you to thrive. And they're happy. If you succeed, they succeed. They stay low key. And you know what? They don't even let the, know, the world know that they are even there. So when you go through that awful storm in your life, they're going to hold you up. Their job is to hold you up, come what may, to nourish you and to feed you and to water you. So just as a tree has many limbs and many leaves, there are very, very few roots. So look at your own life. How many leaves and branches and roots do you have? What are you in other people's lives? Are you walking in the light as Christ would want us to? For such a time as this, the scripture tells us as believers in Jesus Christ that we are anointed, that God gives us the strength and the courage and the ability. And when you put the word of God in you, you are going to receive that anointing, that you are going to build your faith and you're going to be equipped for every good work. The scripture also tells us without a vision, the people perish. In my closing, my journey as an alum has been rich and fulfilling. You may not realize the impact, Spring Arbor University, that you've had in my life. Let me share with you. I can recall my teachers. Now, I told you I graduated back in 1990. Actually, 92. I started in 1990. I can recall my teachers here and staff, such as Paul Nemechek, Terry Darling, Edith Davis, and Sharon Joplin, who pushed me to my potential. They saw things in me that I probably didn't even see in myself at that age. So I want you to know that the relationships that you have along your journey especially for me, have instilled maturity and grace and also a greater understanding of humanity. I have been equipped with everything I need to let my light shine and to fellowship with one another because the foundation has already been set. Continue your relationship with God. Walk with purpose, perfect your craft, and find your roots. Thank you again for this invitation, and I pray that this school year is a successful one.